So, as luck would have it, some of you commented and said you kind of like the flashy lights. And I've been away for work all week and haven't had a chance to take them down yet, so here we are. I'd just like to take a moment to thank Libre Computers for sending me one of their Renegade boards. And I know, I know, I know this is a rehash. I've already done a Renegade video, but this one's kind of special. This Renegade has not one, not two, but four gigatajigatas of DDR4 RAM. In comparison, the MakerBase MKS Pi, which has the same rock chip RK3328, only has one gigabyte of DDR3 memory. But does that mean that the Libre Renegade will run higher, jump faster, and be four times more better? Let's fudge around and find out. To compare with the MKS Pi, instead of using a 12 or 24 volt power supply, the Libre Renegade runs off of a 5 volt supply that's fed by a micro USB port. It has a 40 pin GPIO section, much like a Raspberry Pi. It supports an HDMI display, has three USB ports, two USB 2.0 and one USB 3.0, a gigabit Ethernet port, and unlike its counterpart, the MKS Pi, it has an audio port on the side. Ooh. Both boards support eMMC modules, but the MakerBase eMMC is more readily available than the module that the Libre would take, so I'll be doing my testing from a micro SD card for this video. They both also support UART, but the UART pins on the MKS Pi are easily accessible. The pins on the Libre Renegade are actually in the GPIO section, so you have to make sure you find them and get it right. With that being said, let's load up Linux, install Clipper, and see how she do. So for any of you who may be sticklers for continuity, you may notice that the sound quality has improved between the live shots and the computer shots. And that's because I discovered today that my new microphone actually plugs into my phone and I can record directly from that. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna to go to the Armbian website and I'm gonna to go to the download section. I'll scroll down until I find the Renegade board. Click on that. We'll go down to the download section right here. And you'll notice here that it says, UART is accessible on pin six, eight, and 10 with an unusual speed of 15 gazillion. So that's something we'll have to take into consideration when we're setting up for UART communication. I'm going to get it working on USB initially, just like I do with all of my other boards. And I'm not sure whether or not the XFCE version will work. I did have some issues with the Renegade 2 gig version where I had to install the CLI version of Armbian and then install XFCE desktop from there. So I'll download both versions and I'll see which one actually works. So from here, I'll just go direct download. And the nice thing is that I've got a couple of extra SD cards laying around so I can install versions on both of them and not have to worry about flip-flopping back and forth. I could actually do this pretty quickly between the two. So now that I've got those downloaded, I just want to point out that if you scroll down a little bit, there are other supported variants that you can download of Linux. There's a couple of different Bullseye versions, which are just CLI versions. And then you've got a couple of different jammy versions with different desktops. So instead of XFCE desktop, you can have Cinnamon, you can get GNOME, or you can have a minimal CLI version as well. These are all built on the 5.15 kernel version of Linux. But if you want to make your own custom version, if you go over to here, it'll bring you to a link and it'll explain how you can try and build your own version of Linux for your particular need. Once we get that, we can load up our Raspberry Pi Imager. We'll choose our operating system, scroll down to Use Custom. I'll scroll down to where I see the Ormbian Renegade Jammy Current. This one here is the CLI version. This one here is the desktop version, as you can see right here, XFCE Desktop. I'll click on the CLI version, hit Open, choose my storage, which in this case is the SD card, which I've already placed into the slot, choose that, and hit write. So once your image has been written, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the SD card into the Renegade. Make sure you plug in your Wi-Fi module. In my case, I had purchased a Wi-Fi module from Amazon to kind of test out the chipset of the Comfast 810. I had mentioned in another video, actually I believe it was my Libre Renegade video, that the 810 uses a certain chipset which will work on these single board computers and the 815 uses a different version of 
a similar Wi-Fi module, which does not work. So you might have to do a little tap dancing, go back and forth between a couple of the videos. But if you watch the original Libre Renegade install video, this is going to be very similar and it's going to have a lot of the same information. So I'm not going to get too deep into it. I'm just going to kind of glass over it a little bit. But ultimately, what you're going to need in this case for the Renegade, because I haven't quite figured out how to SSH into it yet from the Ethernet port, is the easiest way to do this, plug the Renegade into either your touchscreen that you plan on using or into an external monitor with an HDMI plug, plug in a USB keyboard, plug in the Wi-Fi module, and power it up. Because as it's going through the initial boot sequence, it's going to ask you if you want to install Wi-Fi. And when you say yes, you go into a uh, command line network manager, you set up your Wi-Fi, and everything just seems to come up after that. You set your local zone and things like that. And what you'll get is you'll get a command line. Right now I've got PuTTY called up and I'm SSHing into the board, but the steps are very much the same. Once the installation is complete, you'll get the command prompt over here. And what you're going to do initially is you have to install XFCE because I use the CLI version and the XFCE version does not seem to install right out of the gate. So for me, I download the CLI version. Once I go through the initial setup steps and I get onto Wi-Fi, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to command a sudo app-get update, hit enter, put in your password, it's going to update all of the repositories. Once it does that, you just press the up arrow and change update to upgrade. And it will go through and it will double check all of the information that you have on your Renegade. And it'll ask you if you want to update anything or upgrade anything. Just say yes and go through those steps. Once you do that, what you're going to want to do is go to sudo app get install and type in xfce4 hit enter and once it builds all the dependencies it will tell you whether or not you have it installed in my case i have it installed but it'll ask you if you want to install it you say yes once it installs xfce it takes a couple of minutes and then we can move forward once xfce is installed then we can go in and create our git clone and again to do the git clone we just do a google search for the kaya GitHub page, scroll down, follow these three steps right here. Typically with all of the Armbian and XFCE installs, it will automatically install Git for you. So you don't have to do this, but if you do need it, it's always there, just like I've covered in a couple of other videos. We run the Git clone, then we can run the Kaya script. And this isn't much different from any other Clipper install at this point couple of extra steps. You have to connect to an external monitor with a keyboard, but from that point on, the steps are the same. Load the Kaya script, install Clipper, install Moonraker, install mainsail or fluid, or install mainsail and fluid. The only difference between installing mainsail and fluid versus mainsail or fluid is that when you initially install either mainsail or fluid, it will automatically assign port number 80. If you want to install the other web UI, it asks you for a port number. And at that point, just use the Octoprint port. Use 5000 because we're not using Octoprint. So we can use that 5000 port. And I've also found that port 5001 will work as well. Once we have all of that installed, we can then go to our Clipper directory. So we can say CD period slash Clipper. And then we can run make menu config. And you'll see a lot of the stuff is the same. From here, we can go in and we can create our file, set up all of the configuration options, hit Q to quit, type in make to make our binary file. We can log into our Renegade via WinSCP after we get the IP address for the Renegade by going to our router configuration. In my case, the IP for the Renegade is 192.168.1.21, port number 22, put in our login information that we created when we established the Armbian install, and it's all pretty much the same. At this point, we've created the Clipper binary, go into the Clipper folder, go into the out folder, take the clipper.bin, save it to an SD card, rename it, put it into your printer, and flash the binary. If you've already flashed binaries for Clipper, 
with another board. You don't have to flash a new binary. I'm just going through the steps again very quickly, again, to glass over everything involved. I do have the Renegade working by taking my Neptune 3 printer.cfg, copying it from my MKS Pi, which is not connected right now, pasting it into the Renegade's information here. I'm using the serial by ID, but I should be able to, again, TTY USB 0, save and restart, and we can see right here it connects. So it all does seem to be working. So far, the Renegade does seem to be a little bit more responsive than the MKS Pi. It just seems a little snappier. I have a screen attached to it, and it does look like the resolution is defaulting to the 1024 resolution as opposed to the 1920. You can tell because when Clipper screen loads up, the icons are a little bit wider. I have been able to force feed a resolution of 1024 by 600 to the 7 inch screen, but the 800 resolution for the 5 inch screen did not want to force no matter what I did. I'm not sure if the Renegade will run on the 5 inch screen. I'm going to have to order another one and find out. But it does seem like it's very happy running native with the 1024 resolution rather than the 1920. But I am very interested in seeing if a 5 inch screen would work only because the 5 inch screen is just that much smaller, but it's still a pretty big size. And the seven inch screens on the table that I've got my printers on just kind of gets in the way. So if the Renegade will work on the five inch screen, that's actually a, a plus one for the Renegade versus the MKS Pi. Also the fact that we're running four gigs of DDR4 RAM, chances are we'd be able to run more printers off of a single Renegade than we would off of the MKS Pi. The limitation would be the amount of available USB ports, and whether or not I can get it running on UART. I've got it running on USB right now. I'm going to try and make some attempts to get it to run on UART. I've got those Arduino pins that I can run a jump or two to the UART plug that I have on the board and try and do it that way. And hopefully I'm successful. It seems that on the Armbian page, there is some information about having to set up an unusual baud rate for the UART on pins 6, 8, and 10. I just have to mess around with that and see if I can get that to work. If I can get that to work, then you have two available USB ports and you have the UART pin. So you could essentially run three machines off of a single Renegade. I've not tried to run multiple machines off of an MKS Pi, so I'm not sure how many machines it would run, and I only have two of them to try anyway. So I think that it would really start to shine when you have two programs that are very intense running at the same time on a single board is where the additional RAM and the newer RAM technology would actually start to shine on the Renegade. So as a quick side note, before I go, I did notice that I do have to mess around and see what I can do about getting the ADXL stuff turned on, because whenever I try to enable my ADXL section here, the Renegade will no longer connect. So there's something that I have to do here. I probably have to turn on SPI or something on the Renegade. I have to start poking around with the configurations for that, but that's just something to keep note of right now. This is still kind of a work in progress. The Renegade will connect. The Renegade will work, and it does seem to work well, but I have to dig in and see what's going on with this. If anybody is familiar with single board computers and maybe a little bit more savvy with Linux than I am, let me know in the comments what I can try, and I will definitely give it a go. So that's pretty much it for my testing on this. It's up, it's running, everything seems to be okay. The installation went pretty well. I ordered this board last night and received it first thing this morning. So if you're in the market for a single board computer that can run Clipper and you want it yesterday, order it from the link in the description. Again, there are two different variations. There's a two gigabyte RAM and the four gigabyte RAM. I have the four gigabyte RAM. The installation procedure is very much the same. Install Armbian CLI, install XFCE4, install the Clipper script, run through your Clipper configurations. Everything else is all pretty much cut and dry from there. As a side note, I've noticed that a lot of my recent traffic has been 
non-subscribed users. So if you could, please, please, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. It really helps with my future endeavors and it gives me incentive to continue doing these videos, quite honestly. Hey, future me here. Just wanted to let everybody know that after filming this video, I was in touch with Libre Computers and they told me that they're working on a release of a new distro that will be based on the Linux 6.2 kernel and that the installation issues I was experiencing with some of the other versions of Armbian and Raspbian are more than likely due to the Raspberry Pi installer taking some liberties during the install process and that a bit-by-bit -bit imager may work better with certain distros, so I'll be trying that very soon. I've also been told that the GPIO overlay handling of the Libre distros is better than the Armbian ones, which gives me some hope in getting the ADXL and UART stuff working properly in the upcoming weeks. I also want to take a moment to thank all of my supporters, my patrons and PayPal contributors, the moderators of the Elegoo Series 3D Printers Mods, Tweaks, and Improvements Facebook page, we just hit over 1,100 members. All of you guys on Reddit and just everyone in general. Thank you all for the support and encouragement over the last few months of my 3D printing journey. Please let me know in the comments of anything you'd like to see me cover more in depth in upcoming videos. And if you could, share this channel with your friends or anyone that you think might find this content helpful. Any channel traffic is a big help. Thank you all again for watching and see you soon.